Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in the DCN studio in San Mateo, where I am delighted to be joined by Nisha Pollywal, Managing Vice President, Enterprise Data Technology at Capital One. Nisha, such a pleasure to be with you today. So nice to be here and love your energy, Ryan. <laughs> I'm really excited for this conversation. For more than 25 years, Capital One has used data and technology to deliver value to its customers. How does data serve as the foundation of the business? About 30 years ago, Rich Fairbank, our CEO and owner, started this company, and it was built on IBS, which is information-based strategy. And data continues to be the oil the air we breathe, and so many other things to the company even till today. And I'm so thrilled to be leading the technology side of data. I'm looking forward to diving into the details with you, Nisha. To start with, what impact does the data cloud have in helping power this foundation? So this dates back to almost uh, uh, 11 or so years ago when Rich declared uh, going in on cloud, which was a massive journey for the company. And Snowflake has been the partner from the beginning. So it has been a good journey with uh, partnership across both the companies, which enables a lot of data in the compute and we have north of, I think, 8,000 analysts now using Snowflake. Wow. And they love the front end, of course, and it continues to power our businesses for many, many use cases across our line of businesses. And an, an exciting next chapter here, Nisha. Data culture is incredibly important to this foundation. How does this help organizations unlock the value of its data? And what are some tips for organizations looking to foster a healthy data-driven culture? Yeah, so data, I, I feel, Ryan, is an extremely complex topic. Um, while it is the oil and the air we breathe, one of the things, uh, or topmost thing that I find is the literacy, right? Uh, knowing everything about the data, knowing how you treat that data so that you can reap the value from that data. So one, when you talk of culture, there are three things that come to my mind, right? One is definitely education and the literacy. And when I say literacy, it's across the organization, no matter what size of the organization. Top-down approach. Yeah, and it cannot, be, it cannot be just the top people are trained. It has to be in the organization embedded as the ongoing you know, learning and uh, continuously learning, I would say. Second part with the data culture that comes to mind is always look out for how we are evolving. We talk about like the volumes of data have increased, variety of data has increased. I mean, of course, we talk to Christian at Snowflake all the time of the tools are changing in this landscape. So what's happening and being able to adapt on an agile fashion constantly to that is another part of the culture that has to be kept in mind. And third, not the only one, but all this data has to ultimately bring the ROI to the company that you're working in, right, and working for. So making sure you can measure that ROI on a constant basis so that all that data is ultimately bringing that business to you that you want. So those th three pieces of culture are very important in the organization. Nisha, thank you for that perspective. As you've discussed, you need to be a continuous learner in this space given the rapid evolving tech landscape. How do you stay ahead of the curve and ensure your team is well equipped with the latest data trends and insights? Yeah, so we do multiple things, Ryan. So one I already talked about, we have an internal, actually in Capital One, we have an internal tech college, which is constantly evolving to whatever needs are there. So we have um, something on data and machine learning, which is specific certification that you can take internally in the company. Second thing, we always do like emerging company days, right, where we bring thought leaders from the industry and talk about what are they doing and how do we keep up. And third, we always look for talent, right, um, and the talent is a constant churn in the organization, not only just external, but even internal talent. So a lot of people move around in the company from organizations to organizations. You've also spoken, Nisha, about having an ABC approach, authenticity, bold, caring, overall framework. Can you tell us a bit more about that and how it applies in your leadership of data teams? Yeah, I absolutely love, uh, actually I was reading somewhere that authentic is not the word we can say anymore. However, to me, authenticity is everything, right? If we are not genuine in sharing what we do, people will feel it, right? So to me, authenticity is like, um, and I know before before this we talked about makeup or no makeup, I'm like, no makeup is the way for me, right? <laughs> and bold and courageous is um, as another two ingredients, I feel like we always have to look out for challenging the status quo. 
because even in the data space, right, um, uh, last two years we see what is happening is like hackathons of AI and all that. If we are not bold and courageous to disrupt what is happening, we will stay probably age old, right? What has happened how many years ago? So to me, these are very important ingredients, even as a leadership, um, you know, positions that I have had. And even for my teams, right, be making sure we can question what we are doing on a constant basis and, you know, get ahead of the curve. I think to your point, it's so important, whether it, it be on a team internally or externally, to ask those questions, to, to seek help, if, if, and that's where the overall um, evolution takes place. Yes. I have to say, I don't often get the opportunity to sit down with executives turned authors. You recently released The Secrets of AI Value Creation. What was your motivation for writing this book and what were the key takeaways, Nisha? Yeah, two big things. I'm so thrilled to talk about this topic. It was um, love of learning. So when I had left my um, a small stint at another firm before rejoining Capital One, March, uh, actually 2021, uh, I came across this topic of AI, which is not my topic, I'm not an expert in it, but met, met two Germans and they were doing this book and so I started partnering with them and then one fine day they invite me to be the co-author. I'm like, what is that? Congratulations. So thank you so much. And then second is love for collaboration. I love the idea of sharing because to me humanity is all about sharing and collaborating. So we got Actually, you'll be excited. Every chapter ends with a contributor. So 14 contributors who contributed to this, which wow. is just fascinating. <laughs> Nisha, I realize we've covered a lot. What advice would you like to leave the audience with today and how they can better prepare their business for an ever-increasing competitive world? Yeah, competitive in terms of data, competitive in terms of AI and whatnot, what is coming. So one, always learn. and be ready to unlearn because what used to work in the past may not work in the future. So I say learn, relearn, unlearn should be part of the vocabulary and a continuous system. Second, look out for people who are doing it best, right? I always aspire to look for beacons who are doing the best in the industry and learn from them. Again, part of learning, but also research and, you know, do your best. And three, always make sure you can bring it back to the context of the business you are in. Because technology, for sake of technology, is not good when it doesn't serve the business. You need the context. Yes. <laughs> Nisha, such a pleasure having you on Data Cloud Now. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Ryan. It was fun. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green, and this is Data Cloud Now.